This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. It turns on, I believe, for a few seconds and then shuts off again. So for those who are new to this playlist, the goal is to fix viewer systems for free in and around the Orlando, Florida area. We've had folks drive in from Tampa, some from Jacksonville, even one all the way from Miami, which is like a three or four hour drive depending on traffic. The catch is that I cannot guarantee that your system will be fixed, which is why I'm very wary of folks driving very far to, to get to me because if I don't end up fixing it, well, you kind of did that for nothing. Uh, but if it does sound like something I can fix, especially if it's hardware related, then I'm usually okay with it. So if you do uh, live in Central Florida, maybe even South Florida, depending on how far you're willing to drive, um, you can reach out to me. My email's in the description and I'm looking for new uh, builds to fix every day. That'd be a new build, I should say. It can be an old build like this one, uh, as long as it doesn't work and it's not necessarily software related. I don't like dealing with like, oh, my frame rate dips occasionally, it stutters, this and that. Like, most of the time there, I'm just gonna tell you to reinstall drivers, DDU, swap cards if you have a card uh, that you can swap with or try integrated graphics, see if that fixes the issue, um, or just reinstall Windows. I, I really don't like dealing with software because it, it's just often a rabbit hole that just never ends. You can spend days trying to troubleshoot software to no avail. Um, but if it's hardware related or it sounds hardware related, those are the ones that really pique my interest because I can troubleshoot hardware in literally minutes. And I hope that videos like these provide plenty of pointers for those who might be in similar boats as these viewers. We're able to monetize these videos thanks to sponsors like those in our pre-rolls, uh, as well as companies like Be Quiet that supply us hardware uh, and pay us for that exposure. So uh, I'm very thankful to those companies that keep us going, keep the lights on. And uh, as a result, I don't need to charge viewers anything, which I think is, um, I think it's the right thing to do if you can. Uh, if you can provide a service like that and you're able to monetize on one side of it, you shouldn't also monetize on the other, um, especially if we're talking about maybe a few hours of labor and, um, and when we when we swap parts and things like graphics cards and motherboards, a lot of that stuff I'm sent for free anyway. So I, it, it just, it feels wrong to charge people for things like that. So um, I'm grateful to the sponsors that, uh, that support us and allow us to provide these services free of charge to viewers in the area. That said, this system here, like I said, does not turn on. If it does turn on, it turns on for a second or two and then that's it, it cuts right back out. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't even post. It doesn't stay on long enough to get to the post screen or the, the bio splash page. So we've got some digging to do. I think you guys will enjoy this one. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying activation watermark, hop on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for fractions of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in seconds and activate your OS here. Bye bye watermark. And be sure to use our new offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. Now before we get into the troubleshooting process, I do want to address a couple of things that I'm sure crossed your mind when you first saw this system. For one, yes, the cable management definitely needs some work. Now, Phoebe pointed out in one of our previous Fix or Flaw videos that it's possible these owners were just swapping things out, unplugging, plugging things back in, and that's why these systems look so rough to begin with. Um, but I, I can tell you that most of the time, that is not the case. In fact, since you guys have brought that up, I've been asking folks if this is how their system normally looks because I, I do want to address it uh, and, and fix it if we can in these videos, even though it's not necessarily part of the Fix or Flop idea, the, the, the core of what these videos are about, I still want viewers to end up with systems that leave the office better than they come in and cable managing literally takes minutes. Uh, so we're going to take care of that form. The other thing we're going to do is swap out this case. Now this is actually a pretty cool classic half case from Cooler Master. So airflow is pretty decent. You can see there's plenty of space in here, but I think the case needs an upgrade and that's where our product sponsor Be Quiet comes into play. So this here is the Silent Base 802. Wow, this like barely fits in the frame. Uh, if you're an avid viewer of the channel, you've probably seen this case a few times. We have upgraded a few viewers with it, but it, it, it really is just a tried and true mid tower. First off, it's invertible, which is really cool. You get tons of hardware support in here and you get these interchangeable front and top panels. You can swap these out for mesh counterparts that are included. So if you prefer uh, better airflow over a silent factor, you can do that in the 802. Anyway, even if we can't fix the viewer system, it sounds like it's fixable, but even if we can, I'm still gonna swap them out with this case here. It never hurts to revive, especially an older build with a new case. Now remember, the owner of this system states that it turns on for a few seconds and then shuts back off. We wanna keep that in the back of our heads when we run through the troubleshooting process. The other thing, specifications for this rig, uh, definitely underwhelming. I mean, in 2021, this is like a, a lower end build. I think even the owner of the system would admit that. It's got an Intel Pentium processor in here uh, and an RX 580, I'm not even sure if it's a four or eight gig. I'll see if he's got the, uh, the, the sticker, the label. Actually, I can see straight through here. It is the 
it is it is an eight gig model. Wow, eight gig. Okay, cool. So it's an eight gig five eighty, uh, and then we've got uh, a, I'm not sure what size, what capacity hard disk drive it is, but it's a three and a half inch hard disk drive and a two and a half inch SATA SSD. Uh, okay, with that, let's get into the troubleshooting phase. The first step in my troubleshooting playbook is to attempt to replicate the issue described by the owner. This is no different than if a mechanic takes your car for a test drive after you complain about a misfire, right? They need to diagnose it themselves. They need to be able to see what is wrong in order to properly diagnose the issue. Uh, if you don't see the issue they're describing and you notice something else, you need to contact the customer ahead of time and say, hey, I'm seeing this other issue. Is this something you've seen before? And if they say no, I don't, I just, I usually just give them back. I, I'm like, okay, I don't want to touch it because then they could come at you later and say, hey, well, this new symptom occurred while it was under your control, while it was in your possession. And that's not the case. It was probably damaged further in shipping possibly. Or uh, if you had it in your car and you were driving to meet me and it got tossed around a bit, who knows? Maybe your friend threw it in your car because he just didn't know how sensitive these things were. It's happened before, right? And I'm sure it'll happen again. So you need to protect yourself and your interests and your business if you're, if you're operating uh, under a business and um, and this is one of the ways to do that. So we're gonna power the system on. We have the switch at the rear taken care of. Now we need to click the power button here. Nothing. Okay. That's weird. We're not even getting lights. I'm like triple checking that I have the cable plugged in because I don't even see, I don't see lights anywhere. I don't even know if this board has LED indicators on it, but, oh, I saw it for a split second. It powered on and then immediately powered off. I think we can get the lights on top of the PCI connectors and the graphics card to light up just for a split second and then turn right back off. So we'll flip the power supply switch back into the on position. We'll click the power button. There you go. Actually, the entire system lit up for, oh God, it's, it's fractions of a second, actually. This, just off the top of my head, seems like a short, potentially something miswired. I'm hoping that's the case because that would be a much easier fix than having a dead card or a dead motherboard. Now I've checked pretty much every major as well as minor connection. So front panel connectors look to be fine. The 24 pin, eight pin EPS up top, the dual uh, eight plus six pin for the graphics card. Those are all connected properly and it's not like it could be an issue on the power supply side because this is a non-modular power supply. Uh, I also, as a precautionary measure, cleared the CMOS. That's not the, the, the fix. Um, I kind of knew that going into it though. Typically, if your system's shutting off immediately, clearing CMOS isn't gonna do anything. I just do it just to rule out the slight chance that it is because it's so simple to do. So at this point, we're gonna go ham and start disconnecting everything that is not vital to the functioning of the platform. So non-vital components include the storage drives and includes most fans. We'll leave the AIO connected uh, as well as the pump because we want we want some circulation there in case we do restore power. Uh, the Pentium I believe in here does have an IGP so we can also disconnect the graphics card although even if it doesn't have an IGP we can still rule out the card being the issue uh, by removing it uh, and seeing if we do get sustained power to the platform. So the only things we're really going to leave connected and powered are the 24 pin and the 8 pin EPS up top. Right so essentially what we've done here is strip this computer down about as far as it will go functionally. So we've got the platform which is CPU motherboard RAM and the power supply. If we still see the same symptoms exhibited at this point, that means that more than likely the issue is not related to our discrete graphics processor and it is not related to the storage drives and other things that we just removed. The entire point of troubleshooting is removing potential causes until the point where you've narrowed it down so far that you've got just a single component isolated. And from there, you could go even further and say, okay, well, what on this board is bad? You could say, you know, that maybe there's a blown MOSFET or maybe there's a controller that's died or, or whatever, a super leaky resistor. Could be anything, but my goal is to narrow it down to the component because I can get replacement components from manufacturers rather easily. And a lot of this stuff is really not all that expensive to replace if it's quite old. You can find stuff on eBay rather cheap. The exception is, of course, this bad boy right here. You really wanna cross your fingers and pray that it's not this thing that's bad. So with the system reconnected to power, we're gonna flip the switch at the rear into the on position, and we do need to jump the two uh, power pins on the board now because we disconnected front, uh, front cables. I believe power is these two here. Oh, okay, yep, I saw it for a split second again. It lit up and then it turned right back off. That is very, very strange. Let's see if we can get that to show up again. Nope, not anymore. So yeah, this looks almost identical to what we saw with everything else connected. I suppose that's a good sign uh, in, in one regard. It's not the graphics card. 
that is causing this issue. And that's probably the most expensive component in this build. Next on my list then, power supply and RAM. RAM's a very easy one, and we've shown this in several other fix a flop videos. If you have two DIMMs, stick with just one, interchange them, try different slots, verify that it's not a slot issue, which would be, I guess, a board issue there. Make sure that you don't have a dead channel. That would be CPU related more than likely. And make sure you don't have a dead DIMM. And you can do that, again, by swapping these two out. If you have a friend that has the same kind of DDR4 that your system uses, you can try his RAM as well if you uh, can verify that it works ahead of time. I have verified in, at least off camera here that it's not a RAM issue because we're getting the same symptoms as before. Uh, it will just power on for a microsecond and then turn off. In this case, it's not even turning on, which that's the other half of it. Sometimes it doesn't even turn on at all. So it's not RAM. That means we're gonna be swapping power supplies. And with cables and units swapped around, I know it looks kind of cringy. This unit just kind of hanging here, bear with me. We're gonna connect the power cable to the new unit, the one that we know works. I've verified this in a previous video, actually. We've already built with this. We're going to, actually the power's already on, and we're gonna try jumping the power pins again. Oh, that's it. That's it, that fixed it. I can hear the pump turning and the LED, uh, LEDs in the border lit now. That is, Okay, that, that simplifies things. He needs a new power supply. So on that note, after disassembling his entire rig and cleaning, especially his motherboard, which really needed that, there was quite a bit of dust above the CPU socket, so we took our electric duster to it. I'm not as thorough here as I typically am on my PCDC videos, but this isn't a PCDC video. And honestly, his system wasn't super dirty. It was a bit messy, but uh, nothing catastrophic. We're gonna be reassembling all of this into the new case, the case we're upgrading him with. That's the Be Quiet Silent Base 802. We'll of course need to replace his power supply in this process because because the old one doesn't work anymore. At least it's preventing his system from turning on. There's probably an internal short and we're gonna do a bit of uh, additional investigation into that later in the video. So stick around, we'll connect it to our PSU tester, see if it tells us if we have a bad rail or anything like that. We'll also uh, remove the housing of the unit and see if we can uh, spot any physical defects. Uh, so that will be coming in uh, toward the later end of the video. Uh, but for now, we're gonna be assembling this stuff into the Silent Base 802. Here we go. So this here is the beefcake, and I want you guys to see just how easy it is to swap out the top and front panels. Here goes the top panel. Look at that. Super simple, magnetic, just snaps into place. And here's the front panel. You just push up to remove and simply drop this one in to finish the job. There we go, it's literally that simple. So now we have a case that's much more airflow focused, much like his old case. We wanna to try to stay true to that. He chose that case several years ago and I'm assuming he still has a preference for airflow now. And the 802 gives you that flexibility. You can find it linked below. Now I'm sure most of you have already seen plenty of PC builds, including from our own channel. This is not meant to be a PC build guide. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of skim through this. Now this being an MATX motherboard in an ATX case with seven PCI slots, we're gonna have a bit of dead space down here. And I think the solution that uh, that we're gonna roll with here is a vertical bracket. Uh, this allows us to turn our card sideways so that it hides the empty space. We're gonna have a bunch of cables reaching up from the basement here. So it's gonna look a bit awkward uh, just having that kind of dead space there. Uh, so we'll be able to cover it up by turning the card sideways here. And this will, again, kind of um, trick out his build a bit, make it look a bit more modern. We'll get his RAM installed and we'll connect all of his front IO wiring. We'll get this AIO installed next. See if I can get these screws to thread in. Got her all tightened up. Green light here on the storage drive. So just slide this hard drive bay into position. There we go. The power supply we're gonna replace his old broken one with is a 750 watt 80 plus platinum unit from Antec. And we'll just slide her on in. Nice. We will clean up cable management. There we go. Nicely done. We'll slide on the right side panel. Nice. Now we've got the graphics card. This is gonna be a tad tricky with our vertical mount. I always wanna connect the riser cable first. Wow, this build is looking so much better already. And the last thing to do is connect supplemental PCI power. We'll straighten these cables up just a tad at the rear. But we are good to go. Wow. This looks like a totally new build, but everything in here is the same. We didn't swap anything out except for the case. And that's how big a difference something like this can make. Now, of course, we did turn the card vertical as well, but I only did this because I wanted to hide the fact that this was only an MATX motherboard in here. That empty space is now totally covered by this card, which I think is the icing on the cake for aesthetics. We cleaned up cable management. He was missing a few screws in his AIO block or his CPU block in the AIO. He was also missing a few screws uh, holding this rear uh, exhaust fan for the radiator as well. I'm not sure why those were missing, but I went ahead and added those, uh, made sure that uh, he had new thermal paste. The build is 
pretty much ready to go. Let's plug it in and make sure that it posts. So let's get the system plugged in and flip the switch at the rear. And we should just be able to push the power button up front. Here's hoping for a post. I mean, this more or less confirms our findings earlier, right? That this was, this was a power supply issue because the only thing we changed in this entire build was that PSU. And there we go. There's our, uh, there's our post screen. And we should be loading into an operating system here soon. Just want to confirm that his two drives are connected. And that is a good sign. Also, just a heads up, these fans are supposed to stop spinning. When the graphics card is not under load, these fans have no need to spin because the GPU and the memory combined aren't putting out enough heat to require active cooling. So that is perfectly normal. I always find a few people saying, oh, you forgot to connect the fans. We didn't even disassemble the card, uh, but uh, it is good to go. We also synced up the uh, lighting for the AIO. It was turned off by default, but we uh, used the integrated controller at the rear and uh, switched this to match the white LEDs in the graphics card shroud. Now it's time to investigate this power supply a bit further and for that we're going to use our PSU tester from Passmark. We have used this and actually a few other fixer flop videos in this playlist and it comes in quite handy. It's uh, more or less a, a peace of mind check. It's not going to be like super detailed in what it says uh, but it is certainly helpful to have if you suspect that the power supply is to blame. It'll tell you if your rails are good. It'll tell you if any one of these cables isn't sending the correct power. So all we've got to do literally is just connect the power supply to the unit like so. We'll also connect the CPU cable and we'll connect the VGA cable, PCIe in. And with the PSU connected to the wall, we can hold down this power button here and it should start reading some stats. Okay, we're getting a beeping noise already. So 12 volt looks good. Ripples look fine. Those are a pass. Timings are in check. And this all looks good here. Ooh, power sequencing. Okay, so the five volt rail, possibly something wrong with the five volt rail. So I've drained the PSU caps. You wanna do that before taking one of these apart. And if you do not know what you're doing, if you're unfamiliar with electronic circuitry, uh, in particular power supplies, high voltage things, uh, you do not wanna be opening one of these up. Uh, it's just, it, it's honestly not worth it. That's why you don't see me clean these in a lot of the PCDC videos. Uh, that I published. It's just, I, I don't want to encourage anybody, especially those who don't know what they're doing, uh, to open this up. So this housing should just, yep, should just slide up like so. I want to be careful because the fan is still connected to the housing. So we'll disconnect the fan, move that off to the side. I'm pretty sure the fan is not what's causing this power supply not to function properly. I really should clean this a bit, but uh, I'm going to be looking very carefully for any defect on this PCB. You can see these two very large capacitors right here, just a couple of the things you don't want to touch inside one of these power supplies, even if you think you've drained it properly. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with that. You can see there's a lot of dust buildup, especially on the underside of this board, and I was looking very closely at it. There's a lot of hairs and things in there. I don't expect this to short anything, but just for good measure, I'm gonna try cleaning this up. I'm gonna clean the other side of the main board as well, uh, try to get in between some of the uh, the, the smaller SMDs and things. And uh, once we clean it up, I'm just gonna try again to see if we can get this thing to work. If not, I'm just gonna call it. I mean, these power supplies are, are rather cheap anyway. You might be able to claim warranty with this, but I'd rather just replace the unit outright so he doesn't have to wait too long for a manufacturer to respond. And with the unit looking much cleaner now than it did when it arrived, I'm gonna reconnect it to power. Something doesn't smell right. You know that fried electronic smell? That's what I'm smelling. I can't pinpoint where exactly it's coming from, but something is definitely fried in here. Somewhere on this side of the board. Anyway, I could probably continue investigating. I could whip out my uh, <laughs> my voltmeter and, or my multimeter and just try to narrow down what specific component it is. Um, much of this is beyond me. I've taken a few electronics classes, but um, I'm not that kind of engineer. So I try not to dive too deep into this stuff because it's frankly not my wheelhouse and there are plenty of people who know much more about this than I do. I can say though that something is definitely fried. I, I know that smell. I have been around that smell many times in the past, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, 
Um, this thing is toast, at least in my hands it's toast. And I, in my opinion, it really doesn't make much sense diving deeper into this, spending more time, because at the end of the day, this unit to replace it's only gonna be about 30 or 40 bucks. Well, a bit bummed that I couldn't really show you much in the way of uh, a power supply defect. I was hoping that we'd see something physically wrong, but uh, I, I could just smell it. And it's not something I can obviously convey via camera. Um, but it's one of those things, again, unless I got my multimeter out and started probing, then I have to look up voltages for certain areas of the board, that board in particular. Um, it, it's just not something I'm willing to spend a bunch of time doing because it is such a cheap unit. Uh, that said though, the upside is it's a huge upside. And the viewer system is now back to full and working order. This build is super quiet and that's thanks in part to the Pure Wings 2 fans included in the 802. We only kept two of them in here. There's a third one that you get with the case, but uh, we removed that to fit the AIO here at the rear. Um, so yeah, the system is all good to go, and I'm excited to be able to report back to the owner that uh, he'll be able to finally game on it again. It's been, like I said, a little over a month, I think, since it's been up and running, and uh, I can't wait to see the look on his face. With that, if you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Your viewership is such a huge support of the, the, the channel, this playlist in particular, the other playlists that we've been starting up. Um, the, the viewership is just, it's just been phenomenal. It's very encouraging, and it allows me to continue doing things like this with viewers in the local area. Maybe at some point I'll be able to kind of travel around a bit and uh, help others in other states, other parts of my state even. Um, that is a, a long-term goal of mine. I've even thought about the possibility of like buying a van and just driving across the country and meeting people in, in parks and things, public places, and being able to work on their systems and clean their systems in my van. Um, I think that would be like the coolest thing ever. It's just like a fixer flop and PCDC on tour. Like that <laughs> would just you get, you get to meet so many cool people uh, and, and not have to tell them, sorry, you're not local, I can't help you. And that's what I've been saying a lot to people who've been reaching out about participating in the fixer flop playlist. If you're not local, there's not much I can do. I cannot, I just don't have the time to try to troubleshoot with you over the air. Um, it, it, it's just, yeah, my time is, is pretty limited as it is, especially doing things like this. So the PCDC videos take up a huge chunk of my week, unfortunately, uh, but those videos are some of the most popular on the channel so far. So that's why I continue doing them that, and it is a nice little therapy fix for me as well. So with that again, thumbs up, uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next. My name is Greg. Thanks for troubleshooting with me.